Good afternoon, everyone. In the next 13 minutes, I'm going to talk about autogenous shrinkage of alkali activated slag and flash. My name is Jinming Li. Last year, we had some uh, great events which I really wanted to join to meet you, but uh, I didn't get time. And now I really think I have some chance to meet you because we have this uh, uh, micro durability conference this year. But then uh, the coronavirus came, so it's a pity we cannot meet uh, physically. So I put my pictures here, you, so you know who is now talking. And uh, by the way, the lower picture is mine now, so you can see how the PhD career makes people old. Uh, we are studying alkali activated materials. Uh, we try to reuse the industrial byproducts like the slag and flash, and we know the production of this kind of materials will save energy and also induce lower CO2 emission compared with the production of bottle and cement. But these materials also have disadvantages, for example, the fast setting and also the large shrinkage. When the shrinkage is large, it has several consequences in the point of view of shape, and also um, cracking can develop, which induce uh, a bad effects on not only strength, but also durability. So my topic is on autogenous shrinkage of alkali activated slag and flash. Uh, to systematically study this topic, we need to consider several issues. So first is the magnitude, so how large is the shrinkage? And then what is the reason behind? And if we know the mechanism behind, we should be able to predict the shrinkage. And not only in pace level, but also in concrete level. And besides the free shrinkage, we consider also the cracking potential. Because in the real applications, the materials is always under a certain extent of restraint condition. So we need to uh, study the stress and the cracking potential of these materials. If we find the shrinkage is too high and the, the cracking potential is too high, we need to find strategies to mitigate the shrinkage and the cracking potential. Uh, but I cannot study all the possible mixtures. I mainly focused on the slag and flash activated by sodium hydroxide and the sodium silicate. So I will uh, talk them one by one. First is magnitude. From the literature, we know that the autogenous shrinkage of uh, slag and flash based systems will increase with the slag content and also increase with the alkali and uh, silicate contents. So basically, the more alkalis you use, the higher shrinkage you will get. This is also what I found from my experiments. So we can see the alkali activated slag system shows higher autogenous shrinkage than the blended system. But even the shrinkage of the blended system is still higher than that of the bottom cement, not only in paint skill, but also in concrete skill. So indeed, these systems show high shrinkage. And uh, when we talk about the mechanisms behind, we first need to think about the chemical shrinkage, because uh, chemical shrinkage is the root reason of self-desiccation. For bottom cement, it normally shows chemical shrinkage, but for alkali activated materials, not necessarily. For example, for metacoline-based geopolymer, we found chemical expansion. Uh, however, fortunately, for the slag and the slag and flash blending system, uh, they normally show chemical shrinkage, which makes our research a bit easier. Uh, why chemical shrinkage is important? Because it means the reduction of the total absolute volume, uh, which means the formation of uh, internal voids and also meniscus, which can induce capillary tension. So we will find job in the relative humidity. Uh, but for the alkali the slag and the slag and flash black systems, we found that the self desiccation is not the only driving force. For example, if we put the material under saturated condition, there is still a certain amount of shrinkage that is developing, not like the bottomless cement. Bottomless cement will show expansion when you put it in the saturated uh, condition. So that means other driving forces, other mechanisms also play a role. For example, the steric hydration force. Uh, this force is caused by the hydration shells surrounding uh, the ions. Du during the geopolymerization, the ions are consumed, and then this repulsive steric hydration force reduced, then we will have shrinkage. And besides this uh, uh, force, another important reason uh, for the high shrinkage of alkali alkali slag and slag flash blending system is the creep. These kind of materials are just more viscose compared to bottle and cement. So even under the same amount of force, this material tend to shrink more because a large part of the shrinkage is creep. 
and we propose a model to describe this kind of uh, uh, deformations. Uh, now we know the mechanism, we should be able to predict the shrinkage. As we said, in the, on the pace level, we can divide the uh, shrinkage into several parts, the parts induced by uh, steric hydration force, the elastic part, and the big creep part. But when we want to predict the shrinkage of the concrete, we need to consider the restraining effect of the aggregates, which are really stiff, which do not shrink, but it can restrain the shrinkage of surrounding paste. Actually, we have a lot of models that is available for the bottomless cement concrete, but not all of them work for geopolymers. For example, we found that the FIP model code tends to give a very large underestimation of the autogenous shrinkage of the uncollectivated concrete. This is because the relationship between the strength and shrinkage for uncollectivated concrete is different from the relationship we found in bottomless cement. Actually, the empirical parameters identified for bottomless cement are not applicable for alkaline aggregate concrete. We also have other composite models like Peak's model or Hobbes model, and we found that uh, this model tends to overestimate the shrinkage. This is because in this composite model, they treat all the deformation as elastic deformation. But the restraining effect of aggregates on elastic deformation and on creep deformation are different. If we assume all the deformation is elastic, we tend to underestimate underestimate the restraining effect and overestimate the shrinkage. So based on this knowledge, we developed a, a new uh, model. We call it extended peaks model to predict the shrinkage of the concrete. I, I do not have time to go into details into the equations, but I will show you the final uh, expression of this equation is of similar shape as peaks model. Just the creep part is taken into account in every step of calculation. And we can see that, OK, this uh, model can predict really well on the autogenic shrinkage of the concrete. We talked about uh, uh, the, the free shrinkage and also the mechanism prediction. And then we need to talk about the cracking potential. Uh, from the mechanism part, we know that a large part of the shrinkage of alkali aggregate paste is uh, creep. Then if the material is under restrained condition, there is supposed to be a large stress relaxation. Right, because actually creep or relaxation, they are just two sides of one coin. It both reflect the viscoelasticity of the material. And this is indeed what we found. For example, we found that uh, uh, the stress in our materials actually is even lower than the stress in restrained bottomless cement concrete with similar strengths. We can see the, uh, the rate, uh, the, the, the stress rate decreases with time and also the, the, the cracking is even later than the cracking of bottomless cement concrete, even though the autogenic shrinkage is higher. And we also propose the uh, numerical approach to predict the stress and uh, the cracking time. Uh, the key parameters to consider include elastic modulus, degree of reaction, creep, relaxation, tensile strength, etc., etc. And uh, although the stress relaxation helped to reduce the stress, the cracking still occurred within a month or within uh, 20 days or something. So we need to find strategies to mitigate the shrinkage as well as the cracking potential. I tried a different method, but uh, here I only show uh, two effective methods. The first one is internal curing by the SAPs. We know these superabsorbent polymers uh, uh, can uh, absorb a lot of liquid and can expand. And the liquid inside can be used for internal curing. And we indeed found there is a large uh, shrinkage mitigating effect on our systems, especially in the very later age. In the early age, it doesn't work that well. Uh, through the CT scan, we can clearly observe the release of liquid from the SAP particles to the surrounding. But in the very early age, as we said, the self execution is not the only driving force of the shrinkage. So However, amount of SAP you add into the system, you cannot eliminate the shrinkage completely, especially in the very early age. To further mitigate the shrinkage, we need something that can alter the reaction kinetics and the microstructure of the material. Then it comes to our second uh, strategy, the addition of metacoline. Metacoline is also widely used as a precursor for alkali activated materials, we know that. 
and we found that if we add just a small amount of metacoline into slag or slag flash blending system, it will show a great mitigating effect or shrinkage, uh, because this one can influence a lot of fundamental aspects like the reaction products, reaction kinetics, pore solution, pore structure, everything of the system. Then we found that the addition of metacoline can mitigate the shrinkage not only in the later age but also in the very early age. This is very important. So now we know metacoline can mitigate the shrinkage in the very early age and the internal curing works really well in the later age. Then we are thinking why not we combine them together. And indeed we found that the, the paste with both SAPs and metacoline they show much much lower autogenous shrinkage compared to the uh, reference mixture. Then we add this mixture into a concrete and we found the concrete shows a good workability and also a very low autogenous shrinkage. Also the cracking potential. I didn't put the results here but I can tell you that uh, we, we didn't find the cracking in three months or 100 days. Just no cracking because uh, the shrinkage is very low. Uh, so now it means we successfully uh, solved this problem. This project can be uh, finished to some extent. So in summary, what I did, I characterized the microstructure of alkali slag and flash. I get these parameters, and then I develop models to use this parameter to predict the autogenic shrinkage of the paste, as well as concrete. And besides the free, auto, free autogenic shrinkage, we also consider restrained shrinkage, uh, through which we will estimate the stress and the cracking potential of the concrete. And uh, not only we analyze the problem, but also we provide solutions to the problem. We and identified uh, several effective mitigating strategies to the shrinkage. But of course, there is always something that uh, has not been understood clearly, like the very deep underlying mechanism. And in my future, I also need to look at other volume stability issues, like the drying shrinkage, thermal shrinkage, for example. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, you can always contact me by email since I didn't explain all the details today. And if you're interested in my uh, papers, you can also easily find them in the website. Basically, they are with uh, open access. And I also want to take this chance to acknowledge all my co-authors and also people uh, who really helped me before in the past few years. And I really appreciate your time, your help and your kindness. Thanks also go to the group members of CMMB group of Dr. Guangye. Uh, thank you a lot for your help. And last but not least, I thank you all for listening to me. Thanks for your kind attention. Any questions?